Hey, welcome. Today we're going to talk about container packing. So with container packing, usually you have one big box and a bunch of smaller boxes and you're trying to figure out how many of these smaller boxes can you fit in the big box. Now, anytime you're packing a cuboid into a box, there's actually six different orientations that you can take. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Most of the time in an exam question, they'll specify which way is supposed to go up. Let's just consider that cereal needs to stay upright and we'll look at how many we could fit into this box with both of these orientations. So first of all, this way round, how many can I fit along the width? Four. How many could I get along the length? Three. There's a gap but I would not be able to fit another box in there. And how many can I fit in height-wise? Well, there's only space for one layer. So I get four times three times the one layer gives me 12. What about this way? How many can I fit along the width? Two. What about the length? Five. And still only one layer for the height. So two times five times one, 10. It was better off the first way round. But unfortunately, when you're in an assessment, um, you will be asked this written down on a piece of paper. So it's important to be able to visualize what's going on and try and figure out what's happening. So first of all, we've got this question here. We've got a small box with 20, 10 and 30 as it's a length, width and height. It really doesn't matter which way round you call those and some people call them breadth, it doesn't make a difference, but we've got three dimensions, 20, 10 and 30. And then on this larger box that we're trying to fit them into, we've got 1.3 meters, 1 meter and 0 0.8 meters. So the first thing that's important to note is we've got mixed units here. So we've got centimeters over here, we've got meters over here, that's just not going to do. So we're going to have to change one of them. It doesn't make a difference which one you change, but personally I'm going to change the meters into centimeters. Okay, so you might just want to note what they are. As we know from the previous example, this box, it was going to have to stay up, it will specify if it stays up. There's only going to be two orientations that we're looking at. So we've got when the box is like this and when the box is like this because it's staying upright. That means we've got to do two full sums figuring out the, the volume. It can help to make a little table. I've just sketched myself a table here that goes through the length, the width and the height. And then I'm going to fill in the big box and the small box. Um, we just want to make them consistent. So personally, I always say that the length is the one that's facing me. Um, and the width is the one going off to the side and the height is the one going up the way. So, first of all, on the big box, the length, the width and the height, we've got 130, 180. When the small box is positioned like this, as it's shown here, the length facing us would be 20, the width is 10 and the height is 30. Okay, and now to figure out how many, say, of this small box we could fit along the length, we're gonna divide them. 130 divided by 20, you probably already know, is not gonna be a whole number. It's 6.5. We can't fit 6.5 of a box in, so we're gonna have to make that six. Do it for the rest. Okay, so now we know in the length, we can fit six boxes in this way. We can fit 10 boxes going back that way, and we can have two layers of boxes. If you think the height's 30, and the height of this one is 80, so, we can't quite fit three layers in, but we can get two layers in. And then to figure out the total, we're going to times these three numbers together. That gives us 120 boxes. And I make sure to show the sums, show my working. And now I get to do it all again, except instead of the box facing out the way like this, it's going to be facing like that. So set up the table again, as before, the big box is going to stay the same. It's only the small box that's moving about. Table the same, big box stays the same. The only thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna swap around the length and the width on the small box because we're not changing the height, it's still staying upright like this. It's still gonna be upright here, but we're going from this to this. So the length and the width are swapping places. Same calculation again, do the divides to figure out how many small boxes can we get across there. You can do that one in your head. And the height's still gonna be the same, still only two layers. So now to find our total, we do length times width times height, same as the volume of a cuboid. And as if by magic, just by swapping the box from here, to here, we can now fit a whole 10 extra boxes in. What? Okay, you know the drill by now. So you're gonna pause this, you're gonna have a try, thinking how many Rubik's cubes can be packed into this crate? Now the important word there is cube. And as you probably know with the cube, it does not matter at all which way around it is. So you should only need to do one of these tables. Go for it. Set up the table, fill in the information for the big box. Oh, make sure you do it in the same unit. So this is in centimeters. You want this to be in centimeters as well. 
or you could make this into meters, but that would be a very weird sum. Since this is a cube, they're all the same. Do your division. Know that there's no such thing as 0.6 recurring of a Rubik's cube, and so we have to round down. And then find the total by multiplying. Wow, that is a lot of cubes. 1,925 cubes. Okay, just for fun so that you can get practice of doing the different orientations, I've got Two practice questions here. You know the drill. How many of the small one can you fit inside the big one? Make sure that your units match up. For these, you'll need two tables for both of them. Okie dokie, here we go. I'm gonna run through this really quick, so pause it if you need to have a look at any of them. Start off with the table. Fill in the information for the big box. Whoa-oh! Make sure that this is in centimeters. Decide which way around your small box is going and fill in the appropriate lengths. Do the division. And then knowing that you can only get whole numbers of boxes, and you can't just squeeze them in, work out the total by multiplying. Wow, that was so fun. Let's do it all over again, but we'll change the small box length and width around. Everything's the same so far. The small box has been rotated. It's still the same height though. Do the division. Wait, what? I had one job, one job to switch the length and the width around and I didn't do it. Ugh. Height's still gonna be the same. It's time times. So it turns out I can get 112 boxes in this way, but only 88 boxes in this way. Wah, wah, wah. Better off doing it that way. Glad I did the maths to check. Okay, here's another practice one. First table down, looks like we're getting 192 boxes. Let's actually swap the length and the width around and see if it makes a difference. Whoa, look at that. We turn those around and now we can fit 225 boxes compared to 192. Wow, I'm so glad we did the maths. So that's container packing. I'll leave some links in the description for some more practice ones if you want to do them. And uh, thanks as always for turning up to maths class. I'm glad you're here. Um, it's really good to see you, even though I can't see you.